Discord. You are good to go. This has been a crazy week. A week of ups, a week of downs, a week of weird stuff in the re- in the wrestling industry. A lot of stuff that uh, blew everyone away. We never had any idea that it would be happening. Uh, we're going to get into a lot of that. Uh, including the life of one of uh, wrestling pioneers, one of the greatest minds in wrestling, Pat Patterson. He passed away this week. That's one of the downs for sure. But we're going to get all of that and more this week as on... Breaking Down Professional wrestler and professional podcaster, Colt Boom Boom Cabana. My name is Killer Cross. This is the Smoke Show, Scarlet Bordeaux. What's up, guys? The After Machine, Brian Cage. This is Ryan from Pro Wrestling Tees. Sadly, you are not listening to The Art of Wrestling, but you made a decent choice because you're listening. You are now listening to... And you're listening... And you're listening to... You listen to Breaking Down the Ring. 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 Bring it down. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching, you are listening, you are paying attention to the most inappropriate pro wrestling show in the motherfucking world. You're listening to Breaking Down the Ring. We are your ring crew. Jess Smitty. Right here. The also sheep of here. all sheep, Konik19. <laughs> He's a bad boy, ladies and gentlemen. And me, the almighty one, Mikey himself. Oh, fucking Christ, man. Uh, Nick, that's nuts on your fucking Facebook friends list, brother. I mean, uh, let's, 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 uh, look, I read it. We, <laughs> we do our best not to be political on this show because, uh, it doesn't make any sense to be political, but I, we're also full believers in there are certain things that aren't political that people make political. Uh, wearing a mask is now a political fucking statement and it's stupid. It's stupid. It's stupid. It's stupid that it's political, not stupid to wear one. Cause I think you should be fucking wearing a mask. Matter of fact, everyone should be wearing a mask. Let's do this. Let's do this. hundred percent. Let it be known. All right, ladies and gentlemen. That I mean, he's got the one that goes. Oh, yeah, he, he's got the tele tele mask. I mean, tele and mask. Let it be known, ladies and gentlemen. Wearing a mask is fine. It's this is not political. I don't know if you know this or not. Uh, this is a baseball mask. This is you know just something completely different. You know, it's uh, this is what you should be doing if you go outside. Fucking wear a fucking mask. You know, it's real. It's real simple. Just throw it on. If you're at home, take it off. But if you're outside. Throw it on. I don't, I don't know why this got fucking political. I really, I really don't, man. I, I can't fucking fathom that wearing a mask is a political statement uh, right now because wearing a mask is, does a lot of things. Like it saves fucking trans- lives. Right. Saves lives, slows the transmission of COVID-19. I, I don't understand why people got into this head that uh, it stops. Nothing, nothing stops it. Nothing stops it. It's going to go for a very long time. This is this here for a very long time, but it slows it. It helps prevent it. So, if it helping prevent it, that means it helps people live. Granted, not everybody has made the best of decisions regarding COVID nineteen. I got it. I had it. I was one of the people who had it. I had the antibodies, you know. Uh, but I also fucking almost died having it. Imagine no bro- breaking down the ring with Mikey. 
That's it's blasphemous. Blasphemy. Imagine it without Nick. Blasphemous. Imagine it without Smitty. Yeah, still blasphemous. You thought I was gonna make a joke about him, didn't you? Even Smitty thought I was gonna make a joke about him. But he <laughs> is a very integral part of this show. We do love him. We only give him shit because we love him. You know, I'm the original minority of the show. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Smitty. Now wear that badge. I wear that badge with fucking honor. Well, I remember the last time you wore something fucking honor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are we talking about the dresses? <laughs> oh, no, but now we are. Let's talk about when you wore a dress. No. Um, the, bot- the bottom line is, man, fucking wearing a mask is not a political statement. It's, it's something to help prevent the spread of a deadly disease. Is it a disease that is uh, more deadlier than the flu? Is it something that, like, look, if you want my honest fucking opinion about it, I do not believe this is just like the flu. I do also don't think it's deadlier. I mean, across the U.S., it's, I mean, across the world, it's basically around the same thing. But the problem is we don't have a stop for the spread like we do for the actual flu, that vaccine. So what do you do? You take preventive fucking measures. So you don't fucking spread that shit. Nick, you got called a sheep last night because... Go ahead. Well, I posted some uh, screenshot from a Twitter user that was just... I mean, I kind of took it as a positive post. Like, you know, I, I made the comment, I'd rather in the future say we did too much than we didn't do enough. And by wearing a mask, that helps my fellow neighbor treating them as if I were treating myself. And long story short, treat others the way you want to be treated. And I don't want to wear a mask. I hate wearing a mask. But I do it because I want to protect myself. But I do want to protect everyone else because God forbid... I mean, I might not know about it, but you can have COVID, not have symptoms, infect somebody else, that person dies, okay? Yep. So I'm responsible for your death, whether I know it or not. I mean, give me a fucking break. It's not that big of a deal for the, you know, 15, 20 minutes I might spend in a store to put a mask on. Because the minute I walk out of that store and I'm in the parking lot, take the mask off, I go in the car, go home, and I go about my business. You know, so somebody just took that to the next not even the next level like four levels up and it turned into a whole shebang of crazy comments and conspiracy theories and this that and the other it's like dude it ain't that serious to wear a mask and it it did it went from you know our governor here in the state of michigan to we're sheep to trying to get you know I tried to like call my wife a libtard and yep. it took every ounce of my being not to go on a fucking tirade that would have put me in Facebook jail because I know shit about this dude that he posts, but I didn't want to make it that personal. You know, <laughs> I've read, I started to read some of the comments and I, I was like, this guy's probably one of those guys that used the N word in private. Oh, I'm sure. But you know, it's a new day. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <clears throat> and uh, by the way, <laughs> shout out to them bringing that like the powder itch for Big E this week. <laughs> Let him tell his story, Smitty. Well, it, it it is a new day, and you know we can just move on. Put a mask on when you're in public. It's it's not that big of a deal, man. It really isn't. It's not about oh you're a sheep. I mean, apparently I am, but you know I still Boo. stand by. I mean, I, I stand by. Tell your surgeon not to wear a mask the next time that they uh, that you go under the knife, and let's see how you feel. Don't tell me it's right. not the same thing because it is. One hundred percent. Um, look, that's just our little piece of the pie right there. You know, everyone should be masking up. Uh, I, I I love when people go at the governor. Like, uh, she's some sort of uh, major problem. You know, it's like, do I agree with everything? No. God, no. You're not supposed to agree with everything with uh, politi- with political figures. But that's because they're doing the best thing for everyone, and it doesn't always mean it's the best thing for each person. It means it's best thing for overall, you know? Um, but there's even things that I disagree with that I think are being done that aren't the best things for people overall. But that's 
neither here nor there. That's like, that doesn't mean just because I don't agree with like 10% doesn't mean that other 90% doesn't fucking matter. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's, you're not going to agree with every political fucking figure. I am one of the, look, it's widely known that I am not a Trump fan, right? I despise the dude. Pretty sure but, everybody on his show kind of feels that way. Right, right. But it's also stupid for me to say that he never did anything good in his presidency, right? Because he, he did. It may have been like one or two things, but still, to you, you have to know that people aren't perfect. And you, you, you go, you deal with the stuff that you can deal with, but you take the overall thing. Your feelings, sorry, folks, ladies and gentlemen, your feelings don't matter more than everyone else's. There's a lot of fucking sayings that are being thrown away right now. You know, uh, better safe than sorry. Uh, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. You know, it's, it's, it's just, that's how life is. Sometimes you get the shit end of the stick and you have to roll with it. I'm one of those people that's getting the shit end of the stick right now. Smitty's one of those people that's getting the shit end of the stick right now. You know, like there's people that are out of work because of this. Him and I are, are two of those people, you know, it fucking sucks. But does it mean that I feel that everything this fucking governor or the, the fucking going on in the uh, United States right now is fucked up? I feel the people who are fighting all the preventive measures are fucked up more than I feel it's fucked up that I'm not making money right now, you know? So that's how it goes. All right, let's get away from that, man. Let's talk about um, something that's a real loss to professional wrestling. Pat Patterson, uh, he passed away this week, um, December 2nd specifically. Uh, he is a, uh, a major pioneer in wrestling. Uh, as a matter of fact, his pay-per-view is coming up uh, next month. Uh, Pat Patterson is the founder of the Royal Rumble. He created it. It's his idea. He went to Vince with this match. And that's the Royal Rumble specifically. That match is fucking Pat Patterson. If you enjoyed any Royal Rumble, if you enjoyed Austin's few wins, if you enjoyed Michael's wins, The Rock going over where Big Show's foot actually did not touch first. You know what I'm saying? The Cena comeback, you know, Triple H holding up after his comeback, you know. Uh, this blowing both of squads. All right. You know, there's uh, any of the, the Randy Orton wins that, you know, it's, it's crazy that this match in itself, which defines a lot of stuff going into WrestleMania, is it wasn't a collaborative thing. Like, think about it. Think of how intricate this match is. You know, two people start, one person enters, over the top rope, another person enters, over the top rope, whole bunch of people get involved. The storytelling with it is, is crazy. And it all spewed from uh, one guy's uh, mind. He's also first ever Intercontinental Champion, right? Like, the, the, the guy's lineage in wrestling is fucking crazy. The fucking first crazy. Openly, openly gay wrestler. Yeah, he, um, he was not. He was not performing by then. He was the first openly yeah, gay man I, in, in the industry. Yeah, that's like, yeah. He was. He was definitely. He came out after he was done performing. But um, still, what did it matter, right? He came out, and all of a sudden, right. everyone's just. Uh, there wasn't a single person that said, "Oh my God, I wrestled a gay guy." But also, like uh, Pat Patterson was also one of the essential characters in the McMahon Austin feud. Yeah, I mean, he was playing the Stooge by then. But yeah, but that was he was still one of those central characters to help get that angle over. Right. Uh is so Smitty, we'll start with you then, man. Uh obviously with the Austin McMahon feud, is there like anything specific that's uh from Pat Patterson's career in it ring or like as a fucking behind manager? the Royal Rumble? Apparently there are some stories that say he was uh also one of the minds behind Hell in a Cell. Uh it was somebody, I, I don't know if it was watching the DVD or one of the specials on the network where they said, um, he said, I believe it was Pat Patterson that said, well, everybody's trying to escape the cage. If you don't, if you want to like solidify the cage match, put a top on it and the hell of cell was born. So then also like, even when he was uh, performing during the Attitude Era, he his role was there. He was there to get the younger guys over. He was there to get the Austins over. He had a mm -hmm. view at Rikishi where he did the stink face, but instead of just doing a stink face, he literally streaked his drawers up and just, 
and hit you with a stink face. And uh, yeah, it's gross, but <laughs> it's something that's memorable. He did. He, he was one of the first guys I see dressing drag on a uh, outside of. Well, Goldust was androgynous. He never really did full on drag, but right. Pat Patterson went in full on drag and did an evening gown match on on a pay per view. Yep. So it's like some of the things that like Pat Patterson's mind is going to be just like it's almost the biggest losses when Dusty Rose left us. That is a mind that is going to be missed in this industry. Yes. So his mind is what his mind and I always laugh when I found out about the whole intercontinental situation, he won an imaginary tournament in Rio de Janeiro to become yep. the first IC champion. Mm-hmm. So just the mind behind, the, 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 the mind that that man had is the one thing that sticks out to me. Nick? I mean, without Pat Patterson, uh, there wouldn't be my favorite pay-per-view of the year, the Royal Rumble. I mean, that right there, the Royal Rumble is one of the things that got me into wrestling. The when I was a kid, and the idea of that was just fucking bonkers to me. Like having thirty dudes in the ring over the top battle royal, I, I just that was so intriguing. And you know, if we didn't have the Royal Rumble, there would be so many different things that we would have never gotten to see. And and like you said Mikey that begins that build up to Wrestlemania so you know there's just so many things involved with that um I remember I do remember him uh, as one of the stooges him and Gerald Briscoe and there are some dudes that I just I couldn't fucking stand but it wasn't like it was go away heat it was it was good heat um you know and the things that he did behind the scenes when you hear stories from a lot of these other guys uh, in the industry it's just I mean, I, you could use the word pioneer in, in some sense, you know, so it's a, it's a big loss. That's for sure. And without him in the industry, I don't think WWE, I think he played a big role in where WWE is today. And without him, they may not be where they're at. Right. Uh, Let's talk about some of his accomplishments, man. Uh, He, in 1981 against Sergeant Slaughter, April 21st, 1981 was considered match of the year for the wrestling observer. You know, like that's fucking crazy. Like people talk about, you know, Pat Patterson as a mind, but in 1981, he was a match of the year uh, for the wrestling observer. He uh, went into the WWE hall of fame in 1996. He obviously won the, the first ever intercontinental champion, uh, which is crazy. One time, that's all he held at one time. Another title that he also held one time, uh, the WWE twenty four seven championship. <laughs> Which He's was also a multiple time hardcore champion, isn't he? Ah, uh, no, just one. I'm not hardcore, not twenty four. Yeah, one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> he's held both titles once. Thanks for burying the lead there, Smitty. <laughs> As I was saying, twenty four seven championship. Uh, the champion he won uh, is hilarious because no one was expecting that when it when it happened. Um, <clears throat> As I had mentioned, he was the WWF Hardcore Champion one time. And when the WWF had the North American Heavyweight Championship before it was put back into NXT, put into NXT he was a one-time champion for there, too. Uh, a lot of NWA titles uh, through different promotions. <clears throat> uh, you know, he, he was uh, the NWA Florida Tag Team Champion with Ivan Koloff. Uh, he was also the NWA's Florida Television Champion, NWA Pacific Northwest Heavyweight Champion three times, uh, NWA Pacific Northwest Tag Team Champion two times, uh, one with uh, Tony Bourne and the other with the Hangman, not Adam Page, not Adam Page, not Adam Page. And uh, NWA United States Heavyweight Champion uh, in big time wrestling. Uh, He had that five times. He was in, uh, went to New Japan. Uh, In in New Japan, he won the NWA North American Tag Team Championships with Johnny Powers. The dude had a life in the business, and the dude had the mind of the business. And let's just hear from some of the people who were affected, Uh, starting with Stephanie McMahon, hashtag RIP Pat Patterson. I'm deeply grateful to have grown 
up with WWE Hall of Famer, the first ever Intercontinental Champion, the father of the Royal Rumble, and the first openly gay wrestler of his generation. Thank you for teaching me how to not take it all so seriously, Abuz. Triple H, <clears throat> no words can describe what he gave to us. His body as an in-ring performer, his mind as a storyteller, and his spirit as a beloved member of our large WWE family. I will miss him for so many reasons. It's never goodbye. It's see you down the road. Love you, Pat. A booze. Uh, referee Charles Robinson. So sad to hear of the passing of WWE legend Pat Patterson. One of the greatest minds in the business and just an all-around great guy. I will miss him and his karaoke. R.I.P., my friend. You are a hero to many. Uh, Baron Corbin. This was, an this was an extremely hard hit today. Pat Patterson is truly a special person. I enjoyed so many wonderful conversations with him throughout my time here, from talking WWE to playing golf and some horrible jokes in between. This man is one I, along with so many others, will truly miss. Uh, Stu Bennett, uh, you know, uh, Wade Barrett. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I was reading, I, I didn't read the WWE. I never realized the WWE posted, he quoted it. Uh, saddened to hear this, Pat helped me and hundreds of other up and coming wrestlers as we tried to figure the business out. A brilliant mind and a tremendous loss to this industry. Thank you. Uh, John Cena, loss is incredibly difficult. Those we love are only truly gone if we stop caring. Pat Patterson lived life as it should be lived with passion, love, and purpose. He helped so many and always entertained with a story or a joke. He will live on in my life always. Love you, Patrick. <clears throat> uh, Roman Reigns, a major loss to the WWE family today. Pat worked alongside my family for years and was always invested in my success. Brilliant mind for the business and always ready to make a joke at your expense. Rest in peace, Pat. God bless. <clears throat> And finally, we'll just talk William Regal. I'm truly saddened to hear the passing of Pat Patterson. Always helpful, willing to offer advice, funny and kind to me. A legendary career. Look, man, he was loved. He was loved and respected. And that's, that's something that you don't really hear too much about wrestlers nowadays. Like, there's always a problem with someone, right? And I'm not saying he probably never had his problems. But when you hear his name, you don't immediately think of a problem. You think of greatness. You know, you think of a long lasting history of contributions that are unable to be taken away from this industry, right? So we here, breaking down the ring, we'll be giving a 10 bell salute as always to anyone that we lost, but this time, to Pat Patterson. Some out for the homie. Rest in peace, Pat. Some out for the homies. Right, some fodder drink. <laughs> Fucking smile. Oh. Um. So some shit has half the legends house now. What? I just like realized half of the legends house cast is gone now. Oh. Yeah, they gone. Damn. Go. Uh, AW was crazy this week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Nick was watching it live because he has nothing else to do on Wednesday nights. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watch both programs. Uh, Smitty was watching it on lag because he doesn't have internet. <laughs> no, because I have my, I have my uh, netbook and my tele and my PlayStation going watch pl watching both programs. There you go. That's a problem. Too much internet, bro. Uh, so, a couple surprises. Uh, let's just talk about the first one. The first uh, big appearance uh, came from the lead singer of The Police. It's crazy. Him 
and his Kama Sutra, Sex Heaven. Oh, wait, no, no, wrong sting, wrong sting. Sorry, sorry. Uh, the icon. Nope, nope, wrong sting, wrong sting. Uh, the, uh, that is. <laughs> no, no, because he's not the icon there. WWE gives everyone a fucking name. We're just talking about Sting. Sting shows up in AEW, stares down Cody Rhodes, stares down Darby Allen. And man, for a, for a fucking appearance that should have been huge, a lot of people felt it was lackluster. Nick, you're one of those. Why? In, in hindsight, um, it wasn't lackluster. But, no, it wasn't. But initially when I watched it, I just kind of got wide-eyed and I was like, oh, it's Sting. All right. <laughs> it's not like you were but, more like getting the shock factor. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think because there had been rumors, and you know, there's always all these rumors, and for me, sometimes that kind of ruins it, and I'm okay with that. Um, but I think the reason I got wide eyed because I didn't expect it on you know national television, and I just I don't know at the time it it really just was kind of lackluster for me. But I did go back and watch it again. I read a lot of people's comments. I I listened to a couple different podcasts and just for me, it it actually, it was a pretty good, uh, it it was a pretty good surprise because the fact that, you know, while I believe it, it should have been in front of a ton of people, but unfortunately we can't have that in this day and age. Um, And now knowing that he's not really going to be wrestling and taking bumps, I think that makes it better for me uh, because I get, I grow tired of seeing these older guys in the ring, putting their bodies on the lines just for the sake of doing it. Um, But when you go back and you look at the look he gave Arn Anderson and the history they have, and then, you know, going over to Cody in the corner, it, it wasn't like a, a bad confrontation more so as like a respect, you know, uh, I knew your father type deal and, you know, that kind of thing. And then <clears throat> he gave Darby Allen a, a good rub in my opinion. And I didn't look at it this way before, but after I went back and watched it and hear, heard some comments, it really was a, a good rub because he didn't exactly like one of these. Whoa. He didn't he didn't just like stare him down from a couple feet away. He shared the spotlight with Darby Allen. And this isn't my thought. I'm taking that from somebody who made this comment, but I completely agree with it. He got in Darby's face as if to say, you know, you are good enough to hold a hold this this light with me and to share this spotlight with me and I am kind of excited to see if him and Darby do a thing, like if he is his manager or mentor or something like that, you know? So overall, looking back at it, I think it was better than what I initially thought. I have a question for you. Where did you read that he's not going to do any in bumps, not taking any bumps, no, no matches? There were a couple articles. I know it wasn't on Wrestling Inc. And it sure as hell was on Ringside News. I don't know, Observer, they say uh, his, uh, he's not supposed to be doing any wrestling. Yeah. Uh, he can, may they try take, to avoid him doing bumps. They try to avoid right, him taking bumps. If he does take a bump, it'll be like a one-off thing. But he's more so there to, you know, be there on TV quite often. Um, it's going to be a multi-year deal, but he's going to be working closely with some wrestlers as – like a, a manager or like an Arn Anderson type deal. That's the idea anyway. And honestly, I hope it's like that. Cause like, if like, I'm all right with Sting being there, if they put him in a role like they've done with, um, with, with Tully Blanchard or Arn Anderson or Jake Roberts, if he's in that kind of role capacity of a role, I can be, I think a lot of people be all right with that. Well, it's like, uh, and I actually thought the, I thought the uh, Sting surprise, they pulled it off great. Like the whole winter is coming thing. They had the snowfall on them. I thought that was really cool. And then Tony Schiavone going, it's Sting, it's Sting. Like, that brought me back to my childhood of just watching WCW. Right. Yeah, I will say that, man. 
I agree like, with you so, there, so, so Shivani on commentary yelling, it's Sting. Uh, I, I marked out. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I kind of marked, like, I marked out here on my couch, on my couch on my bed. It's like, this is fucking amazing. I'm like literally looking like at, I turn into a seven-year-old me watching WC, watching Crow Sting for the first time ever. Seven. So that was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, bits and bits and bits and bears won't work like that at seven. <laughs> hey man, sorry for you. So, <laughs> uh, boom, go away. Sorry, ESPN's notifying me of shit on my watch. So Sting looks like he's not going to have as ma- that major of a thing. It's, it's crazy, man, because when he first came back, you heard Booker T went on his podcast and he was like, "It's going to be great, man." The, Sting didn't get to go out the way he wanted to in a WWE. He was, he was, you know what I'm saying? Like, just Booker T was like, that Sting's gonna go back, just go out on his own terms because he wasn't able to go out the way he wanted to in WWE. Because you know, Seth, I promise you, I'll take you out of the ring for some time. Rollins uh, went at him. You know, he's just Sting, Finn Balor, Becky Lynch, all of these people. He's just taken out of the See, ring no. for some time, <laughs> all because he wasn't as protected as he should have been. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so it's 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 funny to hear that he has a multi-year deal with AEW, yet it's only in possibly managerial aspects. So the question is, if he does wrestle, if 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 he does wrestle, does this kind of pull AEW into the whole? Hey, we're having these older guys do stuff to show up. And take some spotlight from some guys that are, you know, could be great. Smitty, how you feeling? As I say, like I said earlier, if they if if they do if they're doing that, that it's a step backwards for AEW. But I can also see why they would do it because Sting TNT is kind of it's kind of synonymous. Sting's kind of synonymous with wrestling on TNT. He was a figurehead for t- wrestling on TNT for a long time. Mm-hmm. And to bring him back, and if they want to do something like put him in the ring, I can see why AEW would do it, but I don't think I, I don't think it's the best move for AEW. Yeah, Nick, I, I I would agree with that. I think if you had him do one match somewhere down the line, I, I don't think that would be a big deal. But if you have him in multiple matches, that's when it starts to get to that point of okay, now you're bringing these old guys to take away the spotlight. But, uh, you know, one match, yeah, I can see that. That I would be okay with that. But Possibly a tag match. With yeah. A six-man tag with the Rhodes. Yeah, and eventually they're like, okay, come on. We, we need you. You're staying. You know, we, we got to get you in the ring, blah, blah, blah. And, and for the longest time, he may say no. And then eventually they, you know, get him into the ring. I don't know. But what I don't understand is how many – times i see people shitting on the fact that aw is so much like wcw but if i remember correctly and correct me if i'm wrong before the fall of wcw wcw was hot as fuck and over as fuck so if it's reminding you of wcw what part of wcw like and he, all these people are jumping to conclusions. Oh, that's Sting, and there, he's gonna fucking do this. He's gonna—he hadn't even done anything yet. He made a five-minute appearance. So, like, speaking I guess, with Shivani next week. I, I guess I'm just to the point where it's like, I don't like to jump to those conclusions and say, "Oh, it's just like WCW." I see those similarities, obviously, but it could be like the better part of WCW where they were killing WWE. You know. Mm-hmm. At 95, 96, first half of 97 type deal? Uh, it wasn't until 99 that they started losing. They, it was uh, 83 weeks. So it was actually 98, the entire year of 98 and uh, back end of 97 that WCW was destroying WWE. And look, I, I think my, my thing with this is I don't give a shit. If things there, cool. You know, um, if he d- does more than one match – I have a problem. Yeah. Right. Like let's, let's just say within this multi-year deal, which it literally could be two, two is multi-year. Okay. Let's say they give sting a match and he wrestles someone who fucking cares. Right. 
and it's Orange Cassidy. Okay, and he goes out <laughs> on his back. I think that might be the best match for him. Like it's just real slow style. <laughs> He's old. <laughs> um, so that or I say that or a multi man tag. So he goes out on his back, as any legend should. Fuck you, Undertaker. And he puts someone over. Okay, and then he's done. Goes out his way in a match. He doesn't get injured. He finishes it up, does the full match. It's the full five minutes. Whatever. And then he's done, done. I'm okay with that. Do you want your going out spotlight? Do you want to do it on a network that made you? I'm okay with that. There's a kid. <laughs> um I, I'm You're 100% about the sheep? okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's a goat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the goat, sir. The goat. <laughs> hey, Callie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't think of anything funny to say to make out of goat. I could only think of girl of all time. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, like, girl one of match, any type. Yes. One match done. That's all he needed. Go out the way he wanted to. Prove to the world that he could have one more match, regardless if it's great. I think I'm okay with that. I hope that's all they give him as far as in-ring work. Right? I'm okay with him doing managerial stuff, him being the voice behind some guy, him just lurking. Right? I, you know, that's that's fine too. Maybe causing some things in matches. I don't know, man. Just, I don't want. I don't want this to go the way that everyone, including myself, bitches about WWE. Here we go. Another legend of the past that is fully 100% taking a spot from somebody, right? There are certain people who, when they do it, it makes sense. Sting going out for a one-off at his age makes sense, right? At some point within these two years or more. Then there's the ones that don't make sense. And those are the ones that you see a lot more in WWE. So as long as AEW doesn't go in that way, which I, I really don't think they will, you know, I, I will say that regardless of worries and thought processes of things, I can't, I won't totally knock AEW for going that route, right? Because they haven't. There are people there, but they're in managerial roles. You know, like, like you said, Jake, Tully, Arn, they're very prevalent on television. But in a role that is not, I'm taking away anything from anyone. They're not. And they're doing it somebody else. Right. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And I think AEW has played that very, very well. And I will never knock them for any, anything like that, anything against that. You know, I think they're doing great with that. So then AEW continues and there's the main event. And the main event is being called by none other than Don Callis. The main event is John Moxley defending his AEW World Heavyweight Championship against the cleaner, Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega in New Japan, Don Callis was the dude calling his matches, right? He was the color commentator in New Japan. He was kicking ass. He was. Are you over? Are you? You guys just having a dance party over there? Uh, they're the cleaner girls. Oh, that's right. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so, Don Callis shows up on AEW to call Kenny Omega's match. He then interferes in Kenny Omega's match, giving Kenny Omega the win and the AEW World heavyweight championship then they just run away because it's pure heel move you run away uh i think marvez stops them before yeah marvez trying to stop before they happen and he goes don don what is what is all this and he goes you'll find out on tuesday and marvez goes fucking dynamite's on wednesday he goes no you'll find out tuesday on impact wrestling and they get in the car and they take off because if there's anything any wrestler does great at leaving it's every piece of their merch Every piece of their bags, every piece of the regular clothes, got to get in this van, full gear, pun none intended, and leave. 
<laughs> so <laughs> John Moxley lost the AW World Heavyweight Championship to Kenny Omega. We all saw this coming. Dion Warwick and her psychic friends saw this coming. Nick, how did you feel about it while you're watching it? Um, I thought that the the car that they drove away in was gonna roll over because they like literally put the pedal to the floor. Like he watched that and was like, holy shit, they are gone. <laughs> um I didn't really expect it to happen. I mean, at I, really? I know that I think, well, no, no, I didn't expect at first because I know that was like the second time I think that Don Callis had showed second. up for a Kenny Omega match. Second, because he uh, did it at uh, the last pay per view. Yeah. So um, I just thought maybe it was a, a thing, but I, I didn't. I'm sorry I didn't make that connection that, you know, they would pull off something like that. But as the match. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, if you're talking about him interfering to cost uh, Moxley the match, I I didn't see that at all. I mean, I meant yeah. like it was fucking gonna happen. Kenny Omega was gonna win this match. Oh, right? yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. That that's what I meant when I said everyone saw it coming. Not the Don Callis interference. Definitely yeah. not with what we're gonna talk about after this. I'm just talking about the match in itself and when it happened. How you felt? Um, I thought the match was was good. Um. I don't think it was as good as their lights out match, but I still think it was good. It was physical. Um, it really showcased more of a, you know, the wrestling style of the two besides getting into all the hardcore shit, which I appreciate. I appreciate. Appreciate um, you. Uh, and I was happy to see Kenny go over. I, I, you know, I know we've talked about it before, you know, all these, executive VP is getting their getting titles and you know eventually you know now we're at the point where it's nearly been two years I'm okay with it I'm okay with the fact that he turned heel um you know I I am I'm just I'm okay that that's that's fine by me and you know I think that is part of the reason why they created AEW not necessarily to get all these younger guys over which is a big part of it but also to kind of get themselves over in the U S too, because they've made such a big name for themselves all over the world, you know, get themselves over now that you've established your name again, after two years. So I I think that Kenny is a very suitable champion. He's a believable champion. So yeah, I'm totally fine with uh, the outcome. Smitty. I thought the match was solid as well. Uh, The Don, the Don Kellis twist at the end, was um like I think that was a perfect way to end the match and complete Kenny Omega's hill turn, which is kind of been slow burning for the last couple months. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I kind of agree with Nick. Like it's uh, people are complaining about people are just complaining about how all AEW champions were former WWE guys. But in pretty much a month, that all changed. Everybody inside that anybody that holds the championship now has not had a prominent role in WWE. If they were there, they were there as enhancement talent for a short while. If they were there, mm-hmm. so like at this now point, they're just the majority of the EVPs. <laughs> <laughs> only half of <laughs> only happy champions. <laughs> only happy champions because Darby <laughs> Allen's not an EVP, nor is he Karushita. I-, I said majority. And if you want to count the FTW Championship, which they are really trying to get some validity to, which. So I, Impact's I, trying to do the TNA Heavyweight Championship too. Okay, so wait, 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 wait. what I was trying to say is, like, hey, I'm an ECW mark, the FTW Championship. Nobody gave a shit about the FTW Championship in ECW. It, like, it just helped Taz's gimmick get over. Right. Nobody cared about the title. I agree. So, like, well, like, this is one of those things. Like, um, it, it, it was the right time for it to happen. For Kenny at this point, right? Well, like, I'm I'm not gonna. I agree with you. I, I shit. I, I said it at the beginning before they started. I'm one of those people that was like, this better not be a fucking. I'm gonna book myself to win every match, and I have to. And I'll give it to him. I fully agree that this has been a very good slow burn for his heel turn. Um, Kenny Omega, after almost two years, is finally the first uh, AEW Heavyweight Champion. Uh, that is not 
uh, that is from the, the people who put this together, right? Um, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to say, keep coming on here and shitting on everything. I, I'm worried about, you know, the future. Of course he was going to be the AEW World Heavyweight Champion. Of course he was. Of course the Young Bucks were going to be the AEW Tag Team Champions. Of course Cody Rhodes was eventually going to hold a belt inside AEW. Let's not pretend that it's not, um, was not going to happen. The question is, when, when they start booking them, if, 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 if they start booking themselves like WCW was booked, whereas the boys have a whole bunch of say and are always wanting to put themselves over and they're the ones who are going to be the win, winners and they're not going to take care of anyone else on, to build up the roster for the future, that's when I have a problem with it. That is not what's going on right now, though, at all. Kenny Omega, like Nick said, made his name across the world. If he would have went to any other company, maybe any other company, any other company outside of WWE, Kenny Omega would have been the heavyweight champion of that company within the first six months of him being there. If not, right the fuck away. Debut on a pay-per-view, boom, wins the belt, right? Because that's what his name was outside of, uh, outside of the major companies in the U.S. He had pull. He had star power. It was Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega going to AEW, it's officially outside of maybe the WWE where he would have he would have thought he would have got something that never did because let's be very honest, it's very possible. But outside of WWE, AEW's turn with him at that top belt took longer than any other promotion would have taken. You would have never seen it happen. And the good thing about that is if Kenny Omega didn't have a major world title in any other company in this amount of time, that company would have been getting fucking blasted by the internet. Why aren't you putting Kenny up there? Kenny deserves that spot. So on and so forth. AW is the only place where you could slow build a Kenny Omega title ring. Period. Right? That's just how it goes, man. And you're going to have to accept the fact that he will be a multiple time champion in AEW. He and will hold this belt again. And if he probably will hold this belt for probably a year, give or take, or close to. Exactly. You're going to give him some time with it. But as long as the feuds make sense and it's not like, why the fuck isn't he putting this person over? Why does it just seem like Kenny Omega just wants to win? That's, it's not possible. But look what he's already doing. Kenny Omega, and this is, did not mean to segue this quick, but I, I'm going to. Uh, Kenny Omega winning that belt with the help of Don Callis has already made a major pun intended, impact. Because now he is going over to Impact Wrestling, which we have touted, not the WWE fail. We have touted as the greatest thing in wrestling right now, but no one's paying attention to it really. And that's what's also crazy about this. Think about this. Smitty, me, when Joe was on the show, we made sure that everybody knew about how great New Japan Wrestling was. And it still is. But we were saying this is one it's one of the best things going on in wrestling you need to watch it look at all the stuff look you know they're they're just going at it now you get to impact impact has brought the entertainment aspect of it and the wrestling aspect of it and we're all going holy shit dude impact is the greatest thing you need to watch but now all of the AEW people who may not have paid attention to impact because it's like whatever it's impact who cares Kenny Omega going to it puts a whole bunch of validity on impact wrestling it sets up greatness for that company and hopefully gets more eyes on it because then you're watching the show then you're seeing those guys go nuts yeah the good brothers they're great i'm not going to argue it you know what a great tag team that put eyes back on impact wrestling kenny omega is a little bit bigger right i said within 2020 i was like within 2020 oh impact has got the rock to premiere on the uh make an appearance and now you get probably one of the biggest wrestling stars in the world to come on your show from another, while he is currently the, the uh, top guy in that company. Right. That is a, it, this is a big year. For this, like, this is some big shit for, for uh, Impact and they deserve it. So they deserve this tenfold. Yes, I fully agree. So let's talk about what this is going to mean. What kind of crossover is going on with AEW and Impact Wrestling? This is uh, from an article on Wrestling Inc. And Smitty, after I read this, I want to get your thoughts. Uh, This past Wednesday night, 
AEW presented a special edition of Dynamite titled Winter is Coming. On top of the surprise debut of Sting, the show ended with Kenny Omega defeating John Moxley for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Omega was assisted by current Impact executive Don Callis for the win. Following the bout, Callis announced that Omega would be headed to Impact this coming Tuesday to discuss the title win. Wrestling Inc. has learned that the relationship between Impact and AEW is not currently scheduled to be that intertwined. From what we have heard, Omega's appearance on Impact will be a one-off and was largely done as a favor from Omega to Don for Don Callis, who was a good friend of Omega's. Omega also requested that Don work as the commentator for his big title win over Moxley. Tony Khan apparently liked the idea and signed off on it. Beyond Omega making a one-off appearance on Impact, it was also relayed to us that the Good Brothers will likely be coming to AEW for one match as well. Omega's appearance on Impact this Tuesday will likely be used to set up the brothers coming to AEW to take on a team that was not disclosed to us. However, the Young Bucks would seem likely. Furthermore, we have heard that Don Callis' contract with Impact Wrestling may be coming up next month. Once Callis is done with Impact, it sounds like he would move to AEW full-time to work as Omega's on-screen manager. Smitty, what are you thinking about this? Are you, are you thinking uh, it should be a one-off? Are you thinking maybe just uh, the uh, one match between the Bucks and the Good Brothers? Or are you hoping that this lasts a little bit longer? Uh, personally, I'm hoping it lasts a little bit longer because I see so much possibility with them having a longer relationship or type of deal. Uh, one thing I, I, I thought immediately was like, I do see the AEW women's division getting better slowly but surely, but it's still mm -hmm. lacking something. Crossover between the knockouts division, the AEW women's division, I think you could elevate those women in that division to a whole new level and get them on a level where, where WWE the WWE women or the NXT women are at. Right. So uh, that's one of the things I, I, was, I was thinking of. And then I just think about some of the dream matches. If you had like these crossovers, like don't overdo it. Like maybe do like one crossover every month or something like that. Have mm -hmm. a crossover episode between each show every month. And I just think about some of the dream matches. Like you can get like, um, get some I wouldn't like mind. I wouldn't, I'm sorry for interrupting. I apologize. I wouldn't mind a couple here or there because impact does a wrestling pay-per-view every month. AW does it every four months. So if you get someone from AW on an, every Impact pay per view, or you do, you know, an Impact person on an AW pay per view, I could I could see that as well. You know, sorry for interrupting. Continue, sorry. It was a, there was still like there's a lot of dream matches. Like also, I thought about Jericho. Like if Jericho did at least a one off in Impact, he's pretty much wrestled in every major promotion there ever has been at that point. Yeah, except ROH. At that point, at this point, I think. Yeah. So uh, Nick, so what are your what are your thoughts? Are you uh, hoping it's more than just a one off uh, for Omega or even the tag match? Are you hoping for a much lo a longer term uh, collaboration, or do you think, hey, let's just get some eyes on Impact and then let Impact stay the way it is because they're doing amazing by themselves? It's tough. I. I... Honestly, I do hope that it's a long-term thing, um, but you know what they say about too much of a good thing. Um, so I think having somebody from AEW go over to Impact once a month or vice versa, I think I think that's a little too much. Um, you know, I, I like the idea of a build and that slow burn more than the instant gratification. Um, but like Smitty said, there's some opportunities here for some dream matches. And, you know, there's so many people in the past, they've been like, oh, well, you know, this never worked out for, for them in, in the past. And I read something that Impact had tried this before with another company. I don't recall who it was. Um, and it didn't work out. And I think Impact is really good on its own, if not the best on its own among all the promotions right now but yeah this can only help them um so for me i'd like to see it every so often maybe every other month or every once a quarter or you know do these slow builds to some of these dream matches and and to some of that to keep impact on its own to keep aw on its own but every so often kind of interweave them a little bit like we liked raw versus smackdown versus nxt once a year at survivor series so 
not to say that they should only do it once a year, but this is for me kind of along that same line. So like every few months build into something, maybe two matches or something to that effect. So here's the thing about uh, Impact. Before the pandemic, they were working with Pro Wrestling Noah in Japan. They were also working with CMLL. And they have a long-standing relationship with a bunch of indie companies, which they um, – was the, Impact has always intertwined themselves with somebody at some point. The pandemic made, made it a, a lot harder to do that. Well, Chris Bay they, was on a GCW show last night. Yeah, he was on GCW. He's about to wrestle in New Japan with the, uh, super, with the uh, super J Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, so with TJP, TJP is about TJP. to be the Super J Cup as well. Let's, but let's like it's that's not like a working relationship, right? These guys are signed with Impact, but they're also allowed to go wrestle for other companies as long as it's not affecting the dates. Yeah, right? It's not like I believe, I believe that's the same thing for uh for AEW, but only thing is Tony Khan had to sign off on it. Right. So, but that's not a collaboration, right? That's not. A collaboration means someone from one company is going to the one show and someone from that company is going to the other show. This is, this is TJP and Chris Bay going to New Japan Pro Wrestling. You know, it's, it's not like the, the New Japan, you're not going to see Naito show up on Impact, right? It's possible. I'm not saying it's not possible, but right now that's not a collaboration. That's just wrestlers wrestling for other companies. You know, that's that, the collab. Well, I'm saying this, like pre-pandemic. Because you have no, no, I know, I know. I'm ta- I'm talking about now. It's like, let's. It, there's no real collaboration going on right now. It's well, just they're going to wrestle for another company. Well, like New Japan and right AEW. Now. New Japan and AEW. There ain't a suck- fucking person from New Japan that showed up on AEW. But Moxley was running the uh, U.S. title. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not a collaboration. That's just a wrestler being allowed to wrestle wherever they want. And Jericho being over there at least three yeah, times a month. There's nobody, nobody from New Japan is showing the fuck up on any of these other shows. That's all I'm saying. But I'm not knocking it, right? Again, it's awesome that they're able to go around other places, especially with Triple H is coming out this week going, we're open to open for business to working with anybody. Motherfucker, you might be, but the people ahead of you are not, right? It, uh, I, I, I look at that statement, and I'm, I read that statement, and I thought about, like, uh, WWE is semi kind of did it. Like, but every time they work with somebody, they either farm all the talent or buy the or buy it, right? Or they like, or they call it developmental. I said, like, I look at Evolve. I looked at ICW in the UK. I looked at Progress. Like you pretty much Evolve though. Evolve happened because of the pandemic. It wasn't supposed to. You know, obviously our good friend Chris, who's hooked us up with many of Evolve people, uh, for interviews and stuff, said it himself. He's like, it was they. We were supposed to just stay running as what we were every now and then someone from nxt or wwe would show up but we're still evolved like we were doing the things that we wanted to do we weren't under we didn't have to get a sign off before doing it unless it involved their specific people and but because of the pandemic because they couldn't host shows they had to sell so that's why wwe bought evolve it's not because it's very possible you're right they could have wanted to buy it down the line but it seems much more logical to let a company keep a company, you know, floundering, sprinkle some sugar on it. Like, here you go. Uh, do what you need to do. Here you go. Make sure we keep you up, you know? And, but again, you know, bought because of the pandemic. And I agree. I WWE is not open to working with anybody. <laughs> exactly. I looked, also looked at, I even looked at EC, the original ECW. They were working with him, and Vince was helped pretty much fund it ECW until he felt like it wasn't worth it and anything anymore, and he just bought it. Well, yeah, I mean that's business. Is that's business. That's not at least it's not them putting a company under. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not what he was doing at the beginning when he was first making WWF, where he was like, "Hey, come work for me. I'll give you some more money, and uh, they don't need you. You can only work for me." Like, right? That's Vince put companies under. Yeah, like pro- so, well, progress in ICW in the UK are still struggling with talent after yeah. pretty much WWE UK pretty much took all their talent. I mean, you even look at some of the old developmental territories, like you you know what's happening to OVW or FCW since pretty much WWE let them go for NXT. Nope. Exactly. You pretty much put those guys under. Again, man. Business is business. I don't. I don't argue that. Like, if you're working with a company, and then all of a sudden that relationship isn't beneficial to you anymore. Bye. See you later, Smitty. 
but also, <laughs> <laughs> but also uh, any type of deal should be beneficial to both parties at some point, shouldn't it? Let's say what I mean, progress ICW. Yeah, you're what? right. Both parties. So, like, progress and ICW pretty much just got robbed of talent. They didn't, like, WWE didn't really give them any exposure until, like, what, maybe earlier this year when they floated that one ICW progress thing on the network. Okay, well, so then say the same thing about Evolve. Well, it's still, like, how, like, what, they still benefited. Evolve still benefited by getting NXT stars over there. Right, and they had people over there from NXT UK and other things as well. It's just in they the UK, they formed the talent from the U, from those two pro, from those two programs. You you just said that there was a working relationship. Yeah, there was a working relationship, so they could farm the talent. For, I don't think you understand. They farm they the farmed talent, the, evolved talent too, bro. They farm the evolved talent, but still, they sent NXT guys over there. You're, you're telling me that there wasn't a single wrestler in the WWE universe that wrestled for a, a progress? Noam Dar was the only one I can think of. Okay, so there's still people that are going there, man. They, and, it was a working and, relationship. Well, hold on, wait, until, don't, you, hold wait. on. You said, shouldn't a working relationship be beneficial for both parties? They had people from WWE show up on their fucking, in their rings and wrestle. It was beneficial yeah, yeah, no, for them. Yeah, yeah, Even no, the Dar smallest amount, short. it doesn't matter. It and still then, is beneficial for them. If it wasn't beneficial for WWE, WWE pulls out of it. Period. That's just how it goes. If it's not benefit, you said it, it has to be beneficial for both parties. If it wasn't beneficial for WWE, why stick around? Just because of the bigger company doesn't make them the bad guy. It did. They did the smaller companies dirty. That makes you I a bad guy. I think that's been WWE's biggest problem. Triple H can say all day long that we're willing to work with this and that or whatever. You're only doing it for your best interest. And I understand it's a business, but they're only bringing in, you know, boxers and UFC fighters now and and this shit, not to benefit anybody else, but themselves to boost their ratings. We're like, I feel like AEW working with impact is more so, yeah, it's to benefit AEW. But it is to benefit Impact, too. It's to get more eyes on wrestling, not just one or the other, but more eyes on wrestling as a whole. AEW is not doing anything to benefit Impact. AEW is doing what they're doing to benefit themselves as well. It does. Impact is doing it because it benefits benefits Impact, right? That's just what it is. You don't go into business with anyone when you're going thinking, how can I help them? It's not a charity game. It's not philanthropy, it's business. And in business, you do everything that you need to build your business. Is it smart for Impact to work with AEW? Yes. Is it smart? AEW is only working with Impact because of Don Callis. If they didn't have Don Callis and Omega wasn't there, that's it, right? Like, yes, you're eventually going to get other things out of this for, you know, the Good Brothers are are more than likely going to be facing Young Bucks on an AEW pay-per-view, right? They're not trying to put over, they're, 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 the Good Brothers are not, are not trying to be put over by AEW. Sorry, AEW is not trying to put up the Good Brothers, right? They're saying, look what our guys can do. There's been a lot of talk about this. Whole bunch of shit happened with the podcast. Good Brothers screwed over the Young Bucks. Young Bucks wanted to sign them. This is a good way to end real life uh, story into a wrestling angle. That's what the best stories in wrestling are based off of some sort of truth. That's what that is. That's it. And it works for both companies. AW is going to make money off of that because the Young Bucks were screwed over. So guess what? The Good Brothers are going to lose to the Young Bucks in AEW. You might see the Young Bucks lose to the Good Brothers in Impact, but I doubt it, right? Business is business. And Smitty said it himself. If it's not beneficial for both parties, one party is going to pull out and do what's best for business for them. Hate that fucking term, but it's true. It's just how it goes. You do what you need to do to build your business up, make your business better. Because the bottom line is, now granted, we all know that competition in wrestling begets better competition from the other people. Some, you know, we talked about it ourselves. Some of the best storylines you were watching were based off in the Monday Night Wars. You know, not some of the best wrestling. It took a couple of years after that for the best wrestling to happen. But the most popular is when you're building up other companies. I'm not saying, and that the other thing is AEW is not doing stuff with Impact to buy Impact. 
right? The majority of the time, WWE is not doing anything to bury another company. I'm, I'm sorry. Talent gets farmed all the time. Why isn't AEW getting shit for farming the fuck out of every independent wrestling thing when they first started? They did the same fucking thing. But you can't just shit on WWE for it because they're not farming talent. You're offering a better contract to these people who deserve more. And it's not a bad thing for the big business that does it. AW didn't get shit for farming everyone. AW destroyed Ring of Honor. Period. It destroyed Ring of Honor. It, Ring of Honor it, still it, bounced back. But okay, but these other companies, you're telling me these other companies can't bounce back? All right. Can you name at least three stars from ICW or, um, like I said, FCW, uh, OVW? Uh, Smitty, what does it matter? You, the other people, these people who are there now are still up and coming wrestlers that eventually will get a name if they're good enough. It doesn't matter if WWE is there right now. Period. Like, and then also, AW AW's, purged a whole bunch of companies. Why is it bad that WWE did it? Let's see who did they purge. Not really. Because, like, the biggest stars came from Japan. You had a couple who? guys from AAA. And Impact, and well, technically the Lucha Bros and um... AW's main guys were New Japan and Ring of Honor workers. Their main guys, and they said we're going to go do our own company, and we're going to take thing- people from all these other companies as well. The working relationship of Ring of Honor and New Japan was fucked when those guys left and made their own company. It pissed off the wrestling world, sir. It did. You may not have heard about it. But I know, I, I feel like I'm being narcissistic, but I've talked to people that have told me a lot of shit with these AEW guys and how it pissed off a lot of people. But things heal in time too, man. FCW and shit, their shit's all over WWE Network right now. You can see it. So it's getting more exposure again. Just because it's like not as popular as it was when they were the main people there doesn't mean it didn't do anything for them. They just got the old library. They don't got nothing from the new stuff. Okay. So you mean to tell me that you see something old on the WWE Network, you're not going to go check out the new stuff now? People do that. I have, actually. But there you not go. As... Doesn't matter. You've looked. You've put eyes on that product. You've given it ratings. You have made that product better. It put me on Jacob Fatu, which... There you go. You have found new wrestlers that you enjoy because you saw something old on the WWE Network that you went and checked out the new product. Sounds like it's still kind of beneficial, bro. I'm one of those marks that is going to look at it. That still Doesn't is going to look at it no so matter what way or another. A lot of people are marks on the WWE Network. That's why the most popular shit is the past stuff. That's all I'm saying, man. Stop it's looking at it in this little fucking pee hole that you're looking at it and check out the entire picture. Because the entire picture is a lot better to look at than that little fucking pee hole pixelated. Uh, what was that fucking artist that uh, you get up on him and it's fucking all bleh? You Dolly? Stand back and, huh? Salvador Dolly? No. Is it Dolly? With the dots? Pica- yeah, yeah, yep, yep. You get up real close, it's just a bunch of fucking dots. You back up, you see an entire fucking photo. That's, that's what I'm saying, man. Stop looking at it at the dots. Step back, look at the whole fucking thing. All right. Bottom line is, we hope that AEW and Impact is a good working relationship. Doesn't have to be in every day, every month, every week. Just has to be something good for both. And I think right now what they're doing is something good for both. Um, we got some fucking picks to make, ladies and gentlemen. Pro wrestling pow, pow. scorecard. Pow, pow. Pro wrestling scorecard. Tonight, you guys these pulled up? Huh? You guys these pulled up? I got Z and Walt pulled up. Nerds. Right. Well, they're busy, man. One, One's a family man. One's a fucking worker. Luckily, there's not much shit to fucking talk about on this. <laughs> uh, NXT Raw Games is tonight, ladies and gentlemen. William Regal loves shouting, Raw Games! Do you see the video of all the NXT stars yelling war games? And they're imitating Royal Regal. I did not. That's probably, <laughs> fucking, probably awesome. It's like oh, a whole bunch of NXT stars just yelling war games in it toward the war almost toward games. the end. 
<laughs> Toward the end, it's like, we're going to goes, you're all absolutely pathetic. It's war games. And at the end, it's just Gar- Johnny Gargano and uh, Candles Ray Butcher in it. I can see that. They're the, they're the uh, bad guys. All right. Um. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. So, War Games is happening tonight. A lot of people were worried about this. Um, and they're like NXT TakeOver 31, NXT TakeOver 32. We're not getting to War Games this year, so on and so forth. Well, fuck yes we are. Can't let it go War Games. Just because this didn't happen Survivor Series weekend didn't mean NXT wasn't going to pull it out, shove it up our asses, and then go, War Games, from the inside of our asses. But they did. And my God, I'm happy. Two war games matches, a men's and a women's. Uh, CM Punk out here praising one of the guys inside the men's war games match because fucking Pat McAfee is the best promo in the biz right now, ladies and gentlemen. You listen to that man talk. That man is spitting hot fire. There's five great promos in the business, and it's McAfee, 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 McAfee. He spits hot fire every fucking time he comes out. So let's talk about war games. Bro, go to ProWrestlingScorecards.com, Pro Wrestling Scorecard. Fill out a War Games scorecard. It's free, motherfucker. You go there and you sign up for the digital, and you can see how well you're doing against the fucking world. Currently, there's 105 people playing the War Games scorecard. You can be one. We are going to be one. Matter of fact, uh, only has any, it's many, you're the only one that's filled it out, aren't you? Yeah, I got a semi filled out. I got like one match. No, I didn't, uh, mine's done. I don't have pulled out yet. Uh, okay, so that's that's why it says one of five for uh, one of one of four. Oh no, mine actually is. I think I that mean I scrolled on something I didn't mean to click. Probably. Oh yeah, it says Smitty's the only one that's filled out. Nick, you said you filled yours out. Yeah, it says complete. I I'll save it again. Yeah, you got to save it, bro. Oh, uh, there it remember, is. Remember what happens when you don't save. So yeah, how could I forget? <laughs> so there was, so there was, this for the, uh, the men's war game match. I was scrolling because I couldn't figure out who I wanted to pick, and I think it automatically picked something for me when I hit the save okay, button. That's nice. All right, so let's talk about this, man. The first match on this card: Timothy Thatcher versus Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, Nick, how you feeling about this? What are your thought process and everything? You don't have to give your picks, but talk about the build and everything, my friend. Um. Build's been pretty good. I wasn't a, a fan of Timothy Thatcher at first, but he's grown on me. Um, I think he's a good heel. He's great in the ring. And I think this has the potential to steal the show between these two guys because Champa is great in the ring too. I think it's going to be physical. Um, I think it's going to be um, not a lot of flippy dippy shit. Um, see a lot of ground and pound, a lot of, you know, wrestling. It's gonna be good. Yeah, it's mini. All right, so I'm kind of I'm, I'm pretty much most agreeing with Nick. Uh, wasn't really built on Thatcher, like outside of the two takeover matches I've seen him in, like the Thatch can like segments he's been doing on NXT have been pretty good. Um, the only thing I disagree with is like the bill. I felt like they just kind of threw champion within these last two three weeks to uh, set up the match. When he was doing the stash can thing for almost what two months now, about mm-hmm. a month, two months now, and um, and it's also the stash can thing has been pretty cool because you got to see some of the people that's in the performance center, like uh, they get some NXT TV time with Thatcher. Also, shout out to Des and uh, Desmond Xavier and Zachary Wentz at the performance center. They got announced this week. Yep. Not Trey McGill. Yeah. But also, that pissed me off. I'm like, <laughs> come on, all the possibility and the rest is not there no more. <laughs> Anyway, so so you're you wish that it was someone else outside of Champa is what you're saying? No, I just <clears throat> oh, I, I just I wish they used Champa a little bit more toward the bill instead of us like this last two three weeks where they just kind of threw I feel like they just kind of threw him in those last two three weeks to give Thatcher somebody to go against. Okay, and uh, also I do agree with Nick that this is the possible show stealer on this takeover. I mean, look, Thatcher. His last two takeover match. Is there any, his last two takeover match for any indication of what's going to happen here? And we know how good Champa is. Yeah, that, this... and that's what I was about to say. Yeah, Thatcher can go. He can go, and Champa can go. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm breaking up. Sorry, man. <clears throat> Post COVID, still got lung problems. Hooray! 
You're fired from um, COVID. <clears throat> God damn it. Nick, you better drink. I'm coming. Nick, what you got in your cup, brother? That's how you got kids. Coffee? Well, not anymore. <laughs> um, Just killed it. You know what's good? Sorry for the side cast. You go get the hot chocolate Hershey Kisses, and you make yourself some hot chocolate, and you put that in there. Oh. 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 Then now Mikey's coming. You get the exact opposite of Smitty. You get a you get a really good hot chocolate rather than a subpar cold chocolate. <laughs> Not your best work, Mikey. Not your best work. That's all right. I don't have to have my best work when it's against you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Timothy Thatcher, Tommaso Ciampa. Let's read off some fucking other people's picks than me. Then Smitty, then Nick. So we're gonna start off with Z. Then we'll go Walt. Then we'll go me. Then we'll go Smitty. I'm just really happy that they all sent this in order. So for Z, he's got Tommaso Ciampa by pin. Yes, the match will be over 15 minutes with four near falls. Walt has Timothy Thatcher by submission. Yes, the match will be over 15 minutes. Five near falls. Now me. I have Timothy Thatcher. Also by submission. Yes, the match will be... mm, No, the match will not be over 15 minutes. And near falls, I got six. Smitty. So... I made this decision after watching the Go Home Show. I have Tommaso Ciampa. So, so I got Tommaso Ciampa winning by pinfall. Yesterday, the match being over 15 minutes, five near falls. Nick, champion, pussy. Champion, sorry. <clears throat> sheepian. <laughs> Your current ring, tru- ring crew sheepian. <laughs> Timothy Thatcher. By submission, yes to over 15 minutes, seven near four. So, Smitty, why do you think uh, Ciampa's going over? I was was just watching a go-home show, and lately on NXT, when you look at a go-home show, they kind of been doing that kind of typical WWE build Uh where a certain person gets some momentum just so they would lose. And that's been getting a lot of momentum lately. So I don't know about that. Like Gargano yeah, like, had a whole bunch of momentum going into the North American Championship match, and then he won. <clears throat> it's, a, it's just one of those gut feelings that I feel like they, they're about to just – like Ciampa's one of their top guys. I, I mean, that's so fine. I, I'm not still, trying to talk still, you out of it. They're still trying to build Thatcher, and I think, like, this is going to be probably – the if, if he does lose this, one, this will be the last takeover he'll lose for a while. Okay. But if he wins, it's going to be the beginning of him going on a tear on during takeover. All right. Hopefully, Dexter Loomis. Him, Dexter Loomis. Oh, damn. There you go. Dexter Loomis, Cameron Grimes. Good accidental segue there, Smitty. Uh, they're going for it in a strap match. Tell me, my friend, how are you feeling about this? You think this? What do you think of this build and everything like that? <clears throat> uh, I feel like this was a useless gimmick match. I feel like it's a useless gimmick match, especially with two war games matches already on the card in a triple flip. Okay. Um, I like Cameron Grimes. Um, the Dexter Loomis character, I'm not sold on the character. I'm sold on his, his work, but not the character. But this seems like they're going to put a rocket on Dexter Loomis at this point. So that's pretty much my thoughts on this match. Yeah, you think that because they were trying to put that rocket on Grimes for the longest time. I feel like they've kind of, mm-hmm. I think feel like they've they're fizzled out with the, well, what the inter- their interest in Cameron Grimes is fizzled out. Okay. I feel like he's going to just be there for right now. He's going to be in high profile things with NXT, but I don't think he's really going to, he's going to be kind of like where Dream is before he got in trouble. Oh, like uh, with kids? <laughs> like I said, before he got in trouble. Just because he wasn't in trouble doesn't mean he wasn't with kids. Just right, before, he got caught. Caught. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just just means he wasn't caught yet. That's all I'm saying. So Cameron yeah. Grimes now messing with nineteen uh, with uh, thirteen year olds. Cool. Good. He's grimy. Yeah. Nick, what are you thinking hey, about the Bills in this match? Um, I'm not crazy about the build. It's it's been a little too at times, a little too. Mm, I don't want to say tickle butt, but a little too comical. Um, which tickle not butt. to say that not to say that it hasn't been funny. Like uh, when you saw there was a couple weeks ago, Dexter Loomis um, kind of popping up behind Cameron Grimes and William Regal, like in that room. Uh, that kind of shit's been a little funny, but I, I'm ready for it to be over. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, you know, I I was reading about some predictions I, I was trying to cheat a little bit here but somebody had called it uh the friends episode where mike and ross phoebe's mike and mike and ross were totally. made to hang they were made to hang out with each other and it was so fucking awkward and then mike left and then phoebe called him before he left the building and mike had to go back and ross was like but you left like i get that feeling from this match because it's like i'm fucking over it like go away already uh i'm a fan of dexter loomis but i agree with smitty cameron grimes in ring work top notch but his character god it's fucking annoying and it's just i'm done with it all right wait the loomis one or the grimes i'm sorry grimes okay i think we're opposite on that one like i like i like i don't like the loomis character i'm all right with the grimes character I think is an updated version of his Trevor Lee character to a certain degree. All right. So let's make these picks. Walt's going to go first. Walt, what you got? I got Dexter Loomis. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Dexter Loomis. <laughs> uh, he has first hit with the strap is Dexter Loomis. He d- says, yes, there will be more than 20 strap hits. 15-minute match time. <clears throat> no to the wrestler b- bleeds. Sorry. Excuse me. Breeds. No wrestler breeding. Yeah, we don't need too that late. Anymore. Say too late. <laughs> once doing this, once do this month. It's true. Uh, I also have Dexter Loomis winning. I have Cameron Grimes, the first to hit with a strap. Yes, there will be more than twenty strap hits. Uh, Sixteen minutes match time, and no a wrestler won't bleed. Smitty, I have the same thing you have here, Mikey. I got a uh, Michael. I got Dexter Loomis winning the match. Cameron Grimes being the first hit with that strap. Yes, hell yeah. More than 20 strap hits. I'm about to get beat like government mules. You know, where's a good old JR? Um, 16 minute match time. No sort of wrestler bleeding. I feel like I Welt? need to change my pick. Yes. It's like, no, Welt? Yes. Some, uh, why, do you, why do you have some uh, pe- marks across his back? Yes. He's about to be hurt. <laughs> uh, Z has Dexter Loomis as the winner, with Dexter Loomis also taking the first hitch with the strap. No, the match will not have more than 20 strap hits. 11-minute match time. No, a wrestler will not bleed. Konik 19. While I wear a mask around you. I have have your antibodies all over me. Tell me your picks for the Dexter Loomis uh, Cameron Grimes strap match. I've got Lex to Dumas with the win. Um, Cameron Grimes is going to be the first to be hit with the strap on 20 minutes. Nope, wait a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, <laughs> more than 20 strap hits, yes. 13 minute match time. And no to any wrestler breeding. You know what, man? I think, like, like I'm going to switch pull. something. I'm not going to imagine on time to 13. You're knocking it down? You have 13 minutes. Okay. I want to read something real quick. Uh, whoops. To, to, to today, Junior? Calm the fuck down. What is the average time of a typical strap match? Uh, usually they strap for about 30 minutes. <laughs> I want to look at uh, <clears throat> the rules here. Oh, oh the pinfall or four corners type deal. Right. No, I want to look at uh, the uh, bleeding rules. Because Daniel said he was probably going to rewrite that, uh, but he hasn't. I don't know, man. I think I'm going to switch to yes to wrestler bleeds. Because if there's going to be over 20 strap matches, someone might break skin. 
Not like a lot, but enough. I get what you're saying. Like that small, like bullshit laceration. Some people yeah, get from the ball. Yeah, those bullshit bleeding. Yeah, I, I'm going to yep, switch. Yeah, I'm it. changing. Okay, Nick. <laughs> yeah, I will too. Because these two, these two white motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 Y'all I, break I honestly, Yeah. <laughs> Us white folks, we are we do not have strong skin. We were we are definitely not born from people out in the fields just picking and dealing with sun all the time. Hey man, the views that's and what opinions it is. expressed that's on what breaking down the ring. That's not look, look, that's 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 what it is. That is hey, look, evolution, it's, it's, motherfucker. If, if, I, if I wanted to make it worse, I'm like this. Yeah, y'all get whipped on y'all back like <laughs> as much as we did. Right. That's what it is. That's what that's evolution. That's you built you built up by the elements. Us motherfucking, uh, that's why we're so goddamn pale. Yeah, y'all was swinging the whip, not taking it. <laughs> right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Our, that's why we, we're really good at pitching in baseball. <laughs> yeah, it's on the best pitch in baseball. All been a while. We're family. fucking great at shot puts. <laughs> you know, anything with a lot of arm strength, that's why a lot of the quarterbacks in the NFL, you know, got them that real. I was like a run. <laughs> you know, like, but, only, like, only, only man, black can run. Like black that's black right. They, they, they run run really fucking fast and they can take a lot of punishment. <laughs> Jesus. It's evolution, <laughs> bitch. Hey, look, our next stereo, our next shirt, stereotypes is funny if it's true. I'm just saying. Do we get that on a t-shirt? Stereotypes is funny if it's true. You can make your own goddamn t-shirt with that motherfucker. Or, I'm not or putting... It's evolution, bitch. <laughs> right, it's evolution, bitch. All right. Uh, North American Championship. Triple threat. Damian Priest, Leon Ruff, Johnny Gargano, all mixing it up. Uh, Nick, build for this match. What are your thought process? Is Leon Ruff having the magical, is most magical uh, end of 2020 ever. Who? Um, Leon Ruff, that's who. <laughs> <laughs> the build has been fine. Um, I I think it's... I, I'm liking Damian Priest's character more and more all the time. Um, and I think the three of them will end up... Uh, this is another match where I thought maybe it might steal the show. Um because Damian Priest, again, like I just said, I'm, I'm liking his character more and more. I'm liking his in-ring work more and more. He's not the greatest wrestler ever, but he is good, and he's very physical, and I think he takes a lot of really good bumps, and he sells things really well. And uh, Leon Ruff, I've only really seen him, you know, once, twice here and there. So um, he's a Michigan I man. Think- I think he's going to steal this show, uh, this match. Is he really? Yeah, he's, he's from Michigan. Um, yeah, I think he's, he's going to steal. Just missed. Oh, who cares? Good to know. That doesn't play into our stuff, though. We're from Michigan. But, uh, yeah, <clears throat> I think it'll be it'll be a good match, and it'll be um, it, it, it'll be it'll be something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Smitty, your thoughts on this? Um, I like the build for this. Like, like this is a way to like Adam Leon Ruff keeps the uh, Gargano Priest feud a little bit fresh. I'm a fan of Leon Ruff. Oh, he's another guy I kind of watched him. He was in Evolve, and um, Leon Ruff is in Leon Ruff. Like right now, the Leon Ruff story, what they they do is kind of what well, gives me some reminds me of the one two three kid Razor Ramon thing. Mm-hmm. So and like that was like I felt like Leon, what they did with Leon Ruff right now is a little blast of the past, and I like that right now from his character. I know the guy could work. Um, him and Gargano had a fairly decent match when he won it a North American title. Even though the best part about that whole match was when Priest tried to put it around him, it just fell to his fucking ankles because the guy's like skin and bones. So. Um, this is also like it, it does have potential to be a match, like one of the, a match of the night. I'm pretty sure that Chopper Thatcher or this is going to be there's going to be a top two match throughout the whole night, even with the stacked war games matches you got coming in there. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, so let's talk a little bit about this match. Let's make some picks. Let's make some pro wrestling scorecards picks, bitches. Uh, I'm leading this one off, then Smitty, then Z, then Walt, then Nick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have Leon Ruff 
winning by pinfall. He's pinning Johnny Gargano. Uh, Leon Ruff will also will also make will also make. Wait, no, I'm sorry. Who's, I thought that said takes. Who's going to take the most near falls? Uh, who's going to make the most near falls? Uh, Johnny Gargano because he's a heel. Uh, 17 minute match time. 11 aerial moves. Smitty. Uh, my picks are kind of similar to yours, so, kind of, but different. Uh, I have Skinner Bones, Leon Ruff winning. My pin fall, Gargano's going to take the pin. He's going to get the most near falls. 24 minute match time. I think they're going to get his Who's going to get time. the most near fall? Johnny. Johnny's going to get the most near falls? Okay. Uh, 24 minute match time, 12 aerial moves. Oh, you think they're going to give these boys some serious time, huh? Yeah, I think they're going to give them a little bit of time. Like, it's what, five matches on the card? Actually, I'm going to switch that to 20. Okay. So I'm going to give them 20 minutes because I think they're going to get these guys some time because – How many aerial matches, moves did you say? 12. Okay. <clears throat> Z has Leon Ruff winning by pinfall. Johnny taking the fall. Johnny also making the most near falls. 18-minute match time. Seven aerial moves. <clears throat> He's actually a Leon Ruff match. And – then Walt has Leon Ruff by pinfall. Johnny Gargano taking the fall. Johnny Gargano making the most near falls. 18-minute match time, 10 aerial moves. All right. Nick, what you got, brother? I've got Leon Ruff going over by pinfall. Johnny is going to take the fall. Johnny will also make the most near falls. 16-minute match time and six aerial Mervs. Mervs. Here we go. Good question. Have you ever watched the Leon Ruff match? Even when he was doing this enhancement down there in NXT? Yeah, I've seen, I've, I've seen a couple matches. It was like the guy springboards off the ropes like crazy. Yeah. Okay, right. let's go. Eight but he, moves. <laughs> <laughs> you went to eight? Yeah, I got. Yeah. that's why I got 11. That's why I went with 12. It's like, <clears throat> I think he's going to go again, for something to get caught. In WWE. <laughs> But also Gargano goes off the ropes as well a couple times. Yep. All right. Up next, the men's war games match. <clears throat> Sorry, that's I can't do that anymore. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, it's like uh all it's doing is making me fucking cough. <clears throat> My fucking lungs aren't what they used to be, ladies and gentlemen. Uh men's war game match, undisputed era. Versus Team McAfee. Undisputed Era, obviously, is Adam Cole, baby! Uh, Kyle O'Reilly, Roderick Strong, and Bobby Fish versus Pat McAfee, Pete Dunn, Danny Birch, and Oni Lorcan. All right. Um, how are you feeling about this build there, Smith? I think they could have did with less, even though I get they try mm-hmm. to get Team McAfee, they were trying to get Team McAfee over. Um. If like I just felt like every like it just they get they did the typical WWE like diminish your return type thing <clears throat> every week with this build, which I I get it. This is one of your biggest uh, matches of the year, and you want to get to see Team McAfee over because it's a fresh new thing. But I'm still looking forward to this match because this is War Games, is undisputed era in War Games, and it's, gonna, <laughs> it's, it's always it is always an exciting and it's always. Probably, I think maybe one of our favorite NXT takeovers throughout the year. For sure, I'm really excited for this. Uh, Nick, I totally agree. I'm I'm really excited for these war game matches, uh, especially. I mean, undisputed era has really been uh, in every male war games match, mm-hmm. um, and they always put on a show. And the build, I I've liked the build, and I like um, you know, like you said earlier in the show, Pat McAfee's promos have been fucking on fire um i'm excited to see pete dunn in this match and uh i mean it's just it's going to be a great way to bring all this to a head you know he's it's, second he has to say, he's also been in two war games matches this would be a second yeah it, it, that's fucking awesome it, it's crazy because just the other week when we were talking about survivor series we were talking about how the year before adam cole and pete dunn just put on a fucking show right and now you get to see them go at it a little, at least a little bit again, you know, and that's fucking awesome just to think of <clears throat> because 
these fucking guys just they just go at it. Uh, I'm really excited about this. I I know that you know you guys talked about North American Championship with Tommaso Ciampa and Thatcher match being the show stealer, but this is War Games and it is always them and it's Adam Cole is the fucking shit when it comes to war games. So I, I just don't see how any other match in this on this pay-per-view is going to top what Adam Cole does at war games. Cause Adam Cole is war game period. Right. Like he's always something involved. He's always involved, but he's always just going over the top and just being so good at it. You know, we talked about that last year, fucking took that move from Ciampa then went amazing. fucking yeah. You know, then fucking wrestled the next night against Pete Dunn, having a goddamn damn near five star match. Look, man, <clears throat> that dude is he's great. He is a he is a blessing to wrestling. Uh, Smitty, you're kicking this one off. Then we got Z. Then we got Walt. Then we got me. Then we got Nick. So um, this is where I think the one uh, one of the few ups, the one upset, and um, this is all coming. I think Team McAfee takes the win this time around. Breaking undisputed eras, undefeated streak. Were well, they not undefeated technically in War Games? Are they? Didn't they lose uh, to well, Ricochet and Pete Dunn? That team with Ricochet and Pete Dunn and Champa. I'm gonna look right now. Yeah, they, I don't I think, think they're they said, undefeated in War Games. Yeah, no, I think they're like two and two. Uh, yeah, yep. Last year, uh, yeah, Champa won last year. Um, and it's a good thing I have this shit pulled up, huh? Making you guys better. I think they're two and two technically. Uh they also, yeah, because they also lost the year before uh to Pete Dunn and Ricochet. And yep, then they won in twenty and no, they're one and two. One and two? Yeah. Uh so I think they keep the Legion Street going in because they try to get Team McAfee over. And if they want to protect those tag titles, all or, or Orkin and Birch. I'm about to call him Lurch. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Lurch. So yeah, I got Team McAfee winning by pin. I got McAfee pinning Cole because that's the way you can keep this feud going. That puts them both at one and one. Um, the undisputed guy to start will be Kyle O'Reilly, and uh, McAfee starter <clears throat> guy to start will be Pete Dunn. The last entrant will be McAfee. Seven near falls, nine chair shots. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Z has the Undisputed Era <clears throat> winning. Sorry. Uh, by pinfall, Adam Cole uh, is going to be pinning Pete Dunn. He has Kylo O'Reilly starting for the Undisputed Era. Oni Lorkin starting for... Uh, Team McAfee, and he has Pat McAfee as the last entrant. Uh, seven near falls, ten chair shots. Walt I'm too close has... to Z. This is going to be either really good or really bad. Walt has Team Walt, McAfee. Uh... I got it. I had to pull it up and make sure I could read it all. Uh, he has Team McAfee winning by pinfall. McAfee's going to make the fall. Adam Cole's going to take the fall. Kyle O'Reilly, undisputed era starter. Pete Dunn, uh, Team McAfee starter. Last entrant, Adam Cole. <laughs> Might want to tell Walter Swiss that he knows that team, the, the war game advantage goes to McAfee, right? Yeah, so that means uh, they come out last. Yeah, those are the last. That's a dumbass, uneducated prediction. You might want to get on water about that one. Yeah, I'll text him. <clears throat> uh, six near falls, eight chair shots. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's getting a dick out of his throat. That's right. <sighs> Uh, T Mac, I have T Mac. T Mac and Food by. <laughs> I have Tracy McGrady winning. <laughs> uh, um, 
yeah, T McAfee winning by pinfall. I agree. Uh, you get one more of these. Oh man, I don't think so. I have Pete Dunn making the fall. Kyle O'Reilly taking the fall. Undisputed era starter. I agree, Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, Team McAfee starter. I'm going to go with Danny Birch. We're going to Lurch? Yep. Lurch. Uh, the last entrant is going to be Pat McAfee. It just makes sense. Near falls, I'm going to have at nine. Chair shots, I'm going to have at eight. Nick. Well, I've got um, Team McAfee Antivirus um, by Pinfall. Pete Dunn making. This on fire today. Final fall. <laughs> uh, Roderick Strong is going to take the fall. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly is the undisputed starter. Only Lorcan is Team McAfee starter. Pat McAfee will be the last entrant. Nine near falls and nine the chair shots. All right. <clears throat> I just text Walt. <clears throat> I wonder if he did the same thing for the women. Who has the advantage for the women again? Because I can't remember. Team Shotzi. And they revealed Io Shirai to be the last member of her team. They did? Yeah. Good heads up. I didn't see that. I'll have to switch that. Walt will have to switch that, too. I wonder if Z will have to switch that. Yeah. Z will have to switch that, too. When did they reveal that? Oh, that was the closing segment for uh, um, NXT for the go-home show. It was a women's ladders match. Shafti Blackheart versus Rhea Gonzalez for the working yeah. women's advantage. And Io Shirai came out and pretty much cost Rhea to uh, – Cost Gonzalez the match shots. He got the advantage, and they announced right on WWE.com, like right after the show ended, that Io Shirai is the last member. Okay, so WWE.com is where they announced it. Because I'm like, I actually watched this week. What are you talking about? I didn't see it on the television. You're fucking with my head, Smitty. WWE did announce that Io Shirai was the last member. Yeah, but on fucking the web. Interwebs. The webs, man. I want to. I'm trying to find that first before I believe you. You just go look at the War Games card right now. <laughs> because if that's, I don't know. I don't see that at all, bro. Do do do. Pulling up right now. Yeah, you pull it up, bro. Wait, what? I'm pulling up right now. Looking at the card. Figure four online says Yo Shirai joins Team Shotzi. Wait, as the last member or the final and the person to come out last? The final member of the team. Oh, okay. I thought she meant like coming out last. All right. Sorry. No, that's she why got I was, the. I okay. said she got the war games advantage. I said yes. Io should yes. join the team. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, that, I, I'm completely misunderstood. You. I was like, when did they say that? Fuck. Io Shirai was the last person to come out. <laughs> like that's that's what I was because that's what we were talking about. And then you oh, said, no, yeah, I, they I, announced I, her I, as the last one. I was, I was the last. I must say last. I said last member of team. Like Shotzi got yeah, the advantage. Yeah, we weren't talking about that. Okay. God damn it, me. Fucking my life up. Just kidding. It ain't my fault. You All misheard right. me. So you hurt. You didn't hear me. No, you. You, you misheard said it wrong. Me. Cunt. All right. So talk about the build for this, Smitty. Since since you had so much to say, talk about the build for the women's war games match. War games. Um, I like it. Uh, I, I, like the, the, I, like, I like the fact that they uh, kept EO, they tried to keep EO a secret, but when you run down the roster on NXT women, the women's NXT roster right now, she was the only obvious choice. Yep. Um, I like the fact that they tried to keep it a secret. Um, 
shot the way that Tony Storm's little heel, Tony Storm's heel turn was kind of unexpected. Well, expected or unexpected. Because like, if you're gonna do a women's championship work in his match, who else are you gonna? Um, you had to fill out uh, Candice's team, so Tony's turn was it made sense. Yeah, it makes sense. I'm trying to figure out how you thought that was unexpected, though, because with Ember Moon and Tony Storm coming back, I the way I thought Ember Moon, when she was officially a face, it kind of was like, okay, so Tony Storm's going to be the heel. Yeah, I, I actually expected uh, I expected Ember to turn more so. Okay. So that was – so Tony Turner was more of a surprise to me. So – they're like I actually I like all the women inside this match, and it's going to be good. Maybe a good one. Nick, what are your thoughts? I kind of expected Ember Moon to turn too. Um, my only thought process behind that was she looks a little bit. Um, you know, when these females turn heel, their makeup tends to get a little more darker, and they have that. Aura about them. You know, with I had to make sure that I talked about the makeup aspect of it before I got anything else. Um, but yeah, EO got hotter when she went here. So did Dakota Kai. They did. And so I don't know. I just, her whole side of her head was kind of shaved. And it just felt like that was her direction. Like, start off as coming back as a face. But so that's the only part of it that kind of surprised me because <clears> I just didn't really expect Tony Storm to go to go heel. Um but it's not that surprising, I guess. Um the build's been cool. Um I've enjoyed Shotzi and Candace going back and forth, uh destroying the tank and um I, I I'm <clears throat> looking forward to this women's uh war games match almost as much as I am the men's war games match. Do you think, do either of you think, we'll start with Nick and then Smitty, I want your answer after that. Do either of you think that this women's match has the potential because of the build for it to be better than the men's war games match or at least do things that are crazier than the men in the war games match? Nick and then Smitty. I think it has the potential to do some crazier things because Shotzi's fucking nuts. Um, She's and done, Eo. you know, EO is the uh you know she has a lot of high flying moves Shotzi just puts her body on the line in ways that you know we can't even fucking understand case in point that one i think it was the evolve show where she jumped through the ropes into the tower of steel chairs you know without giving any fucks um so i think we're going to see a female off the cage um i don't think it'll be better than the men's match um but I, it's going to be close. It's going to be real close. All right. My, th- see, my uh, thoughts on this match is I think it has the potential to be better than the men's match because I think this is the – because you're going to expect more from the men's match and these women are going to show the fuck out just to uh, – the, the NXT women have always gone on the cruise. Like, they, they always go to that ring whatever it is, been trying to prove, especially on these takeovers, we are just as high profile as these men are. And they put, and sometimes I feel like they put a little extra into it, especially something like this. And didn't Candice LeRae, like on the indies, didn't she work some, I don't want to say death matches, but yeah, intergender. So she has the potential to fucking do some damage too. Yeah, she's done uh, intergender matches with, uh, death matches with guys like Joey Janela. And Darby Allen, but she's also done intergender matches with guys like Joey Ryan and other and plenty of other people and Sammy Callahan and guys like that. A lot of girls have done intergender matches with Joey Ryan, even though they (laughs) did not agree to it. (laughs) But yeah, though, but she's also done matches with guys like Orange Cassidy and also stuff like that. So she's very well versed in the ring. I agree. So many verses, like Eminem. Not like Biggie, because his his contract was cut short. All right. Oh, <laughs> man. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Low blow. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Yeah, that's true. All right. 
Z goes first, then Walt, then me, then Smitty. Or then Nick. This is Wait, match number four, five, right? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how we. So we'll go this. back to our original order. The first, our original order. Okay, so it is, yeah, so it, I was right. All right. <clears throat> Z has Team Shotsky winning by pinfall. Shotsky Blackheart will make the fall. Candice LeRae will take the fall. Rhea Ripley will be the Shotsky, Team Shotsky starter. Team Candice star is going to be Raquel Gonzalez. Ember Moon will be the last entry. Nine aerial moves. And yes, there will be a move from the top of the cage. Walt has Team Shotsky starting. I mean, Team Shotsky winning. winning. Winning by pinfall. Ember Moon will make the fall. Tony Storm will take the fall. Shotsky Blackheart will start for Sh Team Shotsky. Candice will start with Raquel Gonzalez. Last... <laughs> he, got he put his motherfucking head down. What did, what did he do? The, the last entrant will also be Raquel Gonzalez. <laughs> even though she is going to start. <laughs> and on the opposite oh, is this, team. Is this Walter Z? Well, uh, six aerial Whoa, moves. Put your motherfucking head down. <laughs> six aerial moves. Uh... He's so, a liability. He's <laughs> team yeah, liability. No. He, he, he switched the last entry to Pat McAfee as well for the other uh, one. Uh, he was responding to that already. So I sent him, I was like, uh, check the women's too, LOL. Uh, <laughs> Almost as much a liability as Jared Goff right now. Uh, hey, uh, Smitty, go ahead of me so I can text him. I'm sorry. All right, I have Team Shotzi winning by pinfall. I actually have Eo Shirai pinning Candles LeRae. I have um, Team Shotzi starter is Rhea Ripley. Team Candace starter, Tony Storm. And the last intro will be Ember Moon. Ten aerial moves. Guess who will move from the top of the cage? I think Eo's going to kill everybody with a moonsault from the top. Oh, 100 <laughs> fucking percent. Um, all right. I have Team Shotzi winning. Last entrant for Walt is Ember Moon now. Team Shotsky winning <clears throat> by pinfall. Rhea Ripley will make the fall. Tony Storm will take the fall. I think that's going to set some nice shit up for the future. Um, Shotsky Blackheart will start for her own team. Raquel Gonzalez will start, will start for Team Candice. Uh, the last entrant, I... Yeah. I, I, I think that Io Shirai will be the last entrant. And uh, aerial moves, I'm going to put up at 11. Move from top of the cage, yes. Nick? Well, I'm going to be the odd man out here and say Team Candace is going to win. Nerd. Uh, Heel team ball. on one, face team on the other. Idiot. <laughs> Unless it's Survivor Series. <laughs> yeah, this uh, is fun. Dakota Kai is going to make the fall. Ember Moon is going to take the fall. Ember Moon is going to be the starter for Shotzi's team. Raquel Gonzalez is going to be Team Candace starter. Io Shirai will be the last entrant. 13 area moves and yes to a move from the top of the cage. All right. Uh, folks, ladies and gentlemen, Make sure you're watching NXT War Games tonight. Uh, again, this is almost – it's almost the end of Pro Wrestling Scorecards versus Breaking Down the Ring 4. Uh, Do you have got, an updated score? I yes. Like 50. Yeah, I posted that. that we were. Uh, um, give me two seconds. I'll pull it up right now. <clears throat> Running towards the end of our show too there, Nick. Sorry. It's okay. I know you hate us. Uh, yep, we are up by 50, 248 to 198. Nick, you're still leading everyone with 83 points. I'm in second with 58 points. Jesse from PWS has 47. Daniel has 46. Oscar has 43. Z and Walt, uh, Z and Smitty are tied at 30. Z, Smitty, and Mario are tied at 38. 
Walt with 31, Michael with 24. Remember, the winner of this gets $100 donated to their charity. Smitty, talk a little bit again about the charity that we're working for since you had a uh, great interaction with them. Real quick, though, because it's 1 o'clock. It's time to wrap yeah, up. Gotcha. Gotcha. So uh, look, our charity is the Capital Soup Kitchen. They do a lot of volunteer work. They work with the uh, Catholic Church as well. Uh, they do food drives, clothing drives, a lot of good stuff. Uh, it's, a good, it's a great charity. Uh, I've done some work for them. I mean, I suck, so... I, I think it's a, a really good one that we picked to hear. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for paying attention. Go to breakingdownthering.com. If you go to the official merchandise today, is the end of the Cyber Week sale. Uh, use the code CYBERSEX. That's C-Y-B-E-R-S-E-C-T-S. -E and you can get yourself 20% off any of the Breaking Down the Ring merch. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. We are your ring crew. It's your boy, Smitty. It's your sheep, Konik19, man. And it's your host, the all Mikey one, Mikey himself. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. We are out. <laughs> Bad boy. <laughs>